Logitech just released their new keyboard being the Pro X60 Lightspeed. It's obviously 60% and featuring Lightspeed wireless with optical switches, double shot PBT keycaps, a standard layout, full key customization, and one millisecond report rate. But as far as in your box, you are gonna be presented with the keyboard in this hard case, kind of like you saw in their most recent TKL release. Little Logitech branding up here. And then over on the bottom right, it says Pro X60. You also got a little carrying strap over there. But opening the case up, you are presented with your 60% keyboard. As you see, we have the white version, but it does also come in a black version and a pink version. We have our six foot long rubber USB cable, A to C. You have an extra escape key if you wanna get rid of that Logitech one. Then over here, you have your adapter and your dongle. Now, even though that hard case had a storage compartment for our dongle, my preferred method is right underneath the keyboard here. You can see that little slot. You can take your dongle, slide it right in there, and it stays in there. It's not gonna fall out or budge, and you're not gonna misplace it. Nothing's worse than misplacing your dongle. Always put it back in the hole. Over here on the right side of the keyboard, you have your game mode. Usually it's like function windows key or something, but this is just a simple switch. Pop it over. You can set the RGB to a certain color so you know when it's on there or just set it to the regular mode. You have your wireless and then your Bluetooth lights up to let you know which you're in, that USB-C charge port, and then your power button. On the underside of the keyboard, you do have that dongle storage. You have the rubber feet here, and then you have some pop-out feet. Now, this keyboard already has a nice stock incline on it, but if you want to lift it up a little bit more, again, you do have the option to pop out those feet. Keycaps on this board are double shot PBT, and they're not too grainy, but not too smooth. That really nice mix right in between. And actually, coming to the space bar, when you flip it over, you can see they have a little bit of foam underneath there. I'm not sure. It's like basic packaging foam, as you can see, but it's locked in there. It is not going to come out on you by any chance. And then pulling the keyboard up here, you can actually see they actually have that dampening rubber in between there, so you don't get that ping or radiation throughout the entire keyboard. Now they are stating the stabs and everything are lubed, but man, I cannot see a single bit of lube on these guys, and it really doesn't feel like it either, which I prefer in my gaming keyboards, but again, if you want them lubed, you're gonna have to slap a little bit more on them. And one thing I really like that they did here is they put these shortcut legends right on the inside of the keycap, if you can see it right down there. And as far as profile mixes, your media keys or your arrows right in there, and it's a lighter gray, so it kind of blends in. If you put the board like this, you honestly can barely see them, which again could be a pro or con. For some people, you see some boards, they slap them all on the top and they look a little bit messy. These are kind of secluded and just put down in the back. So when it's sitting on your desk, you still have a nice, clean, crisp, minimalistic 60% keyboard. But as you all know with me, not being a 60% keyboard mainer, I love the shortcuts being right on it, so I don't have to have a shortcut guide or always pull up the software. Having those shortcuts there are much appreciated. I forgot to mention one of the coolest things, being this little dial on the side of the keyboard here. This is actually your media dial or your volume. And the cool thing about it is you can just be sitting here gaming, WASD in, reach over there, bam, dial it down a little bit. Okay, you want a little bit more? Bam, right there, just with your pinky. It's just a slight scroll right over there and you can turn it up. I absolutely love this touch. Now, as far as the performance of this keyboard, it was absolutely flawless. Butter smooth, no hiccups, no delays, no stutters or anything. That's in wired or wireless mode. I did not use it in the Bluetooth mode. And I also did not use it in, I believe they're calling the Lightspeed 2.1, where you can pair it multiple devices with one dongle. I used this with its dedicated dongle, used my wireless mouse and then my wireless headset. And again, across that, it was butter smooth. As far as the build of this keyboard, you can see it has multiple layers as far as that plastic on the bottom and then this white frame going around it and then that aluminum top plate going there, but there's also dampening foam placed within this keyboard. So it feels incredibly solid, no flex or anything and some nice loft to it as well. Let's go ahead and slap it on the scale here real quick. Get that to zero, plop it down. We are coming in at 616 grams. I mean, it feels very nice. So now let's go and take a look at the G Hub software. Now you see we got our Pro X60 here. Go to click on it. You got some of your basic standard stuff as far as RGB lighting with your effects and then your color profile you want to pick, freestyle, and then some animations over here. Of course, I leave mine on a preset of just solid red, but that's just your RGB settings. Come down here to assignments. This is where things get 
a little bit juicy with this keyboard. You see up here, you got layers, bass, function, and G shift. I think a lot of us are pretty familiar with G shift, but now you got your function layer. You've seen this in a lot of other custom keyboards. I don't even want to say custom keyboards, but a lot of keyboards these days, you got layer one, two, or three. Pretty much same thing here, and I think this might be the first time we've seen this kind of customization from a big brand uh, keyboard. So again, it's the same concept here. It's a little more confusing rather than layer one, two, or three, because again, you got your function layer and then your G shift and how are you going to control to set that up. But let me backtrack here and I'm going to show you something. Where are we going to go? Oh no, let me actually go back in here and I'm going to go down to settings. And over here is custom assignment guide. And this is just a nice little helping hand because again, it's a little confusing than basic layer one, two, or three. Yeah, remap overview and it kind of just shows you, breaks down what to do here. Remap your keys, assign multiple commands. And again, just kind of shows you the breakdown of what it is with the G shift and then the function layer here. And let's party, I guess. So anyways, come back over here. So that is the layers. And again, you can create whatever you want for a basic quick shortcuts and everything. A little bit confusing. Not something I use, um, but you have it if it's what you want. And then, of course, you have game mode over here, which is the switch on the side of the keyboard to disable whichever keys you want. And now if you come over here to, again, device settings, you got some other things to tell you how much power it's consuming. Again, approximately 65 hours of total charge with this. Uh, your lightness dimming down. You see I keep my brightness around 50%. And then you also have that onboard memory mode, kind of like you've seen with the mice and stuff if you turn it on. Right over there, you got memory slot one, two, or three, which you can control right on a keyboard and save whichever profiles you want. So you got different layers or shortcuts set to it. You can have each of those right on the keyboard. Now let's go ahead and get a quick sound test of this keyboard. And we are using the linear optical switches, which are 50 grams of force, 1.8 millimeters of actuation, and four millimeters of total travel. Now you can also get this in a tactical version. The only difference of those stats is they are 60 grams of force. Again, these are 50. If there's one thing I would say about the sound here is you're probably hearing it in there as well as you get a little bit of that plasticky sound, but you notice that with a lot of optical switches, probably one of my biggest gripes about optical switches is you got that plastic keycap going to that switch and then pounding down there. The other thing I noticed when using this keyboard and actually gaming with it is that force being 50 grams. They are a little bit heavier than what I'm used to. I'm usually a 40 to 45, and yes, I can feel that difference. The other thing you're gonna notice is that 1.8 millimeters. You might be thinking, well, all these keyboards with OmniPoint or adjustable magnetic switches, a lot of people set theirs super fast, whether that be with rapid trigger or just the adjustable ones in general. I believe a Cherry MX Silver is what, 1.5 if I'm not mistaken? So with the combination of these switches being a little bit heavier and the actuation being a little bit further, that's where I think the biggest talking point or even complaint about this board is going to be. With it being an eSports dedicated type of competitive keyboard, 60% and all of the esports features packed into it, is Logitech a little bit too late right here? And of course, at the end of the day, the biggest question is gonna be, is it worth the MSRP of $180? Let me know what you think down in the comments.